Hell yeah, you're, uh, you're, there we go. Ladies and gentlemen, Andy says it! Hell yeah! Yo! What up? Can you hear me? We're not worthy! We can hear you. How are you, sir? We're not worthy! Holy shit. <laughs> All right. What's up, guys? Chillin', how are you? Hey. Good, man. How, how's it going? We are doing fantastic. Hey, hey, um, for those that may not know who you are, could you... Uh, properly introduce yourself, let us know whereabouts in the world you are, and uh, plug anything you'd like to plug. Yeah, uh, what's up local band Smoke Out? Uh, my name is Andy Sizik. Uh, I sing in a band called Monuments, and a band called Macari, and a couple other projects. Um, I'm in Frederick, Maryland right now, uh, which is the east coast of the United States, and uh, yeah, I'm stoked to be here. Side. What's up, guys? Are you originally from Maryland? Yeah, I grew up here. Um, and then I moved out to Florida for like three years. Uh, that's where my band Macari is. And that's when we were doing a lot of touring. Um, but then I joined Monuments and they were in the UK. So I was like, I kind of want to go back home and see my family, uh, since it doesn't that. matter where, where I am at this point. Uh, usually writing entails a lot of sending files back and forth anyway. So, uh, it hasn't been detrimental really. What, uh, what part of Florida when you moved there for a couple years? I'm actually from West Palm Beach originally. Tampa? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, I was in Tampa. Oh, kind of outskirts of Tampa, I guess you could say. Uh, Brandon. Cool. Hell yeah. I call me BG, by the way. That's what everybody calls me. What's your me, favorite but, uh... color, Skittle? <laughs> uh, I like the purple pack. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? I, I, I don't know <laughs> if it's... Might be trop. I think it's Wild mixed berry? berry? Yeah. yeah Wild mixed berry, berry, mixed berry. Right. I like the blue one in the purple pack that the blue one's the best shit. tropical okay good to know, yeah. good to know. god i love those i might have to go get some from the gas station after this <laughs> <I got 'em. laughs> hell yeah so yeah. we have uh we have a ton of questions for you uh i guess we'll start with the remake of what some just tentatively call the sumerian song what was life like six months before that video came out <laughs> damn that's a interesting question i honestly have no idea like uh i was in a band called wander i still am kind of that was like my first thing uh for my hometown here wasn't really doing much just trying to get my name out there putting out dgd covers and stuff i think i did uh volumes auditions um i want to say that was before the sumerian thing so yeah pretty boring i was working as a an audio tech for a multimedia company Nice. Um, cool. Yeah, and and I, you know, I didn't have any expectations for that video. I just thought it would be something fun to do. Um, I had no idea people would like it as much as they did. So that was a really cool surprise. I think it's pretty damn cool that you kind of remade it into its own song now called "The Current," and we're gonna play it right now if that's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, man. This song is my baby. Um, I worked really hard on it. I actually played all the guitars and pieces and program drums oh, shit. And, yeah so so i hope you like the instrumentation too oh yeah when um before you were in a band what what did you practice in your car when you were driving around all the time who who are the artists that you would just scream at the top of your lungs man i like your questions um volumes was a big one for me learning how to scream uh I guess um, Dance Gavin Dance was another one I, all the time, all the time practicing Dance Gavin Dance, the er earlier stuff with Same Johnny and with Kurt. Johnny Craig. Yep. Johnny yeah. Craig was a good yeah. teacher, man. Did yeah. you just sub to um, our page? See. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to we did. I, you know, I'd love to be the singer of issues like, you know, who wouldn't? Of course. <laughs> right. Um, and that's it. That's it. I did, that's all. It wasn't ever a thing. I've never spoken to those guys. Um, I was just kind of like, issues need a singer. What up? Uh, yeah, right. With each, yeah. with each but, new. But, I'm sorry. No, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go. You go. I'll, I'll ask a different question after that. I don't remember what I was gonna say. Okay, I was gonna say with with each with each new project you take on, do you have to explain to all current projects? I'm taking on another one, so I might be a little bit more busy this year. Yeah. And how do they? How do they um, react yeah, to that? Man. <laughs> yeah totally 
Uh, the first time I ran into that problem was uh, when I was in my band Wander and I joined Macari. And it wasn't a big deal because at that point Wander was like a studio band. We didn't really tour. So they were like, go for it, man. It's cool, you know? And I just let them know Macari's my priority now. Um, but when I joined Monuments, there was definitely a little bit more, um, I guess, premeditation that had to go into it because our schedules do need to line up and I don't want to have to end up sacrificing opportunities for one or the other. Um, Makes sense. But the guys were still really supportive. You know, I just told them um, I'm going to know my my dates far in advance and we, and you know, we just have to work around that. And the, the guys in, in my other bands have like Macari, they have full-time jobs, so they can't always tour either. The way we sort of see it is like, we're all accommodating each other for our jobs. I don't have a full-time job. Music is my full-time job. So being in monuments is a part of that job. And so we all need to find a way to, uh, make time for the project despite our different hustles and uh so far it's been okay there haven't been there haven't been any times where i had to say no to a tour for makari to do a monument tour or vice versa so yeah um it's been all right the other two projects i'm in are just studio projects so it's not an issue cool Let's play some. Uh, let's play better, which is actually my favorite track of yours. Uh, specifically, right, this yeah. this acoustic version is my favorite. Hell yeah! I saw that you guys are playing uh, Chain Reaction in February in Anaheim uh, on the twenty seventh. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do my best to make make that one. Hey do... man, if, if you can, uh, I'll throw you on the guest list. Just just hit me up beforehand. Ooh. Oh, pff. consider it I done, mean, brother. Yeah, consider it um, done. I love Chain, dude. That that's one of my favorite venues. I'm I'm so stoked to get back uh, to the West Coast, dude. It's been fucking forever with the pandemic and yeah, yeah, yeah. everything. Speaking Jesus. of that, I, I saw that you were had like a reaction or something to your booster shot, which I actually got my booster a couple of days ago as well. But uh, I saw you had. Yeah. Yeah, I had to cancel my stream. It was like a twelve a twelve hour just. I felt like I had gotten hit by a truck. I was exhausted, and my whole body was achy, and especially the you know the arm that I got the shot, and it was like yeah, I couldn't fucking do anything with it. Uh, I just felt like shit for like twelve hours, and then I woke up and felt completely fine. So it wasn't too bad, it, and it wasn't that shitty. I don't want to oversell it. It was just like I just want to lay in bed and. Be you guys warm. just didn't feel yourself. You know, facts. What's no the, big deal. Yeah. What's the uh, What's the best video game ever made? Oh shit! Uh, my favorite is uh, Legend of Zelda: Majora's Mask. Um, Majora's Mask. I have Majora's Mask over there. Oh yeah, there it is. Majora's Mask stressed me out. It was too oh, much. Dude, it's a stressful do. game for sure. You really have to love the the three day mechanic, and if you hate it, yeah, then I never you're gonna hate the, the game. Um, and that's totally, it turned off a lot of people, but there's so much beyond that. The characters I found out later on that there was things that you could do to make it last longer and so on yeah, and so yeah, forth. Yeah, there's but... the song of, of slowing time and, um. Yeah. Is this the yeah, right, that, is this the right video? Know, it, Counterpart? That is, yes, that that's the first Wander album. That's Baby Andy. When's that from? What is that? 2014. Baby Andy. 14, all right. Let's check it out. But we'll first, can we long. can we talk about what the lyrical content of Counterpart? What is it about? Uh, <laughs> it's just a like I suck at relationships song, you know, um, searching for love and being desperate for a genuine special connection, but then realizing what you find isn't what you, you know, had thought it was, or or it isn't what it's all caught up to be, and then you're like shit. I'm, I'm with the, a person that doesn't feel right, and I've done. Fuck, I did it again. You know, got caught up in my feelings. Um, you know, angsty, uh, twenty-two-year-old stuff. Is this your first music video ever? No, I think the first one is "Thanks a Lot," but this is the second one. <laughs> so, what do you look like in real life? What what filter are you using now? <laughs> Damn! <laughs> Ouch! With the burn! Yeah, like that. <laughs> that you, got, funny. you got the sick neck tat filter, bro? No, that's real. That's oh, yeah, real. Take that off, BG. You know <laughs> <laughs> that was just playing, dude. That is hilarious. Oh, yeah, but yeah, we appreciate it. 
Uh, but yeah, volumes and fucking Seosin, Dance Gavin Dance, The Devil Wears Prada. I uh, grew up always just trying to emulate those those bands. Hell yeah. That's how you do it. A lot of people will ask me personally, like, how do you get better at singing or just like sound like that? I was like, just practice to these artists, dude. Sing as loud as you can in the car and you'll notice yourself getting better and better and better each yeah. time. It's not going to happen overnight, yeah. but you will get comfortable with it. Live videos, too, helped me a lot. When I would watch vocalists do their thing live, I could, I sort of was able to see through the cracks a little bit more. You can yeah. kind of tell when it's raw. When it's more raw, you can sort of hear where it's coming from. Did you? Would you say you had a good experience <laughs> working with Greg and and Triumphant? Uh, man, you're really asking tough questions. A, a lot of people m give me not good answers regarding Triumphant. I mean, it was okay. It was okay at the time. Um, there were ups and downs, and uh, I think. If you ask me if I regret it, the answer is no, because it did. We did have a a good hustle going with Watt at the beginning, but this was another time. Really, it was. And uh, would I recommend it, especially today? No, I would not. Interesting. So that's my that's my uh, I guess diplomatic answer. The best I can do. Fair enough. Burns, uh, you're up. Um, now I will say. <laughs> before sorry i didn't mean to cut you off i have no problem saying uh my experience with in vogue records was absolutely terrible I and the it. worst i've ever the worst industry experience i've ever had by light years and never go near yeah anyway go on. stay away from in vogue the... copy well i think the label's over they they sold their catalog but yeah for sure uh... it was bad very bad. Burns, did you have any any other questions you wanted to ask? Yeah, if I were to split your brain apart, like vocally, what three singers do you think have influenced you the most? You named some bands that you practice too, but what three singers do you feel have influenced your voice and that got you where you are? And that's that's really tough. Um, Kurt Travis probably, who was the second DGD singer. Yep. Um, we had him on the show once. And I can almost say Kurt Travis slash Johnny Craig. You know what I mean? Like I don't, I don't want to take up two spaces with that. You but, can do uh, that. That counts. That's okay. Let's let's say that. Let's say um, Spencer Satello. Hell yeah. Free in terms oh, of you range. Just got you with that one. Screaming and yeah, definitely. Um, and then maybe Phil Bozeman in terms of of br brutal vocals mm -hmm. um, from Whitechapel. Yeah. I think he was the one I was trying to mimic when learning how to do the growls and all the deathcore type stuff. Hell yeah. Uh, let's talk about yeah. Termina. So Termina, you said, is mostly just like a studio project. There's not... Have you guys ever... You guys haven't played any live shows for this one? No. No. Um, it's just me and Nick. So we don't have any other actual band members. Uh, I would love to personally someday play live, but uh, I don't know if it's ever going to happen because Nick is not really into the idea of touring and stuff. He's got his his job, his hustle. It's all very, you know, if he missed like a week even at home, he would miss so much content mm. and stuff that he creates. And um, we also wrote that music to be pretty superhuman. So replicating it live, um, it would take quite a bit of practice, and the, I, you know, I don't know how much time that would take. It would, it would really have to make logistical sense in order for it to work. For sure. But check, I personally would love to. Let's check out the abyss. Yeah. Is there, is there any other project that you tried out for that you thought you were, you were in, and then it just happened to go with somebody else, and we just never knew this story, we've never heard this story before? Um, I was talking to this prog band called Ever Forthright for a while, um, but we never, you know, made any like hard commitments and it just fizzled out. Um, I was going to be in the revival of Glass Cloud. You remember that band? Oh, that sounds familiar. Um, it that sounds was going to happen for a second, but then it just didn't. And me and Josh decided to just work on his solo tunes instead. Um... 
but yeah, no, not really. Um, I auditioned for volumes, like I said, on YouTube, like so many other people did when they had their open auditions on the internet. Um, but you know, Mike Terry obviously snagged the spot and they're kicking ass now. So <laughs> you sound better. Yeah. <laughs> you no, better? no, dude, no, not at all. I, I don't think I, I mean, it would have been sick, but, uh, I don't think I was ready. I, I really don't think I was experienced enough at the time. That makes sense. It took I me until just, I'm 32 to finally find my voice, bro. Like, there's no time limit on it. Sometimes you got to wait, and it'll come around, you know? Yeah, but it was a really fun stepping stone in, in my, like, It probably journey. pushed like, you really hard. It put, it did. It it definitely did. And, and uh, every audition or cover or whatever is sort of like a, a notch in the belt, um, a little bit out of my comfort zone each time, and then it adds a little something. You know how it goes. You know how it goes with progress. True. I got a question. What is your favorite dinner, like, to eat dinner? Snack. I heard, what is your favorite dinner, and then I think... Your favorite snack. Favorite snack? Okay. Um, I'm for, I'm a basic bitch when it comes to... Uh, I like pepperoni pizza a lot. <laughs> like, that's probably my favorite food. Um, especially if it's, like, a new... It's from New York. Um, and then my favorite snack... You know those those blue bags... They're called hot fries. Andy oh, Cap's hot, Andy fries. hot fries. Hell yeah. Yeah, I've been eating that Give me since I was yeah. like a young, young, uh, a little boy. And I just, I love out the most because they never had them in California. I would have my grandmother send me boxes oh, no. of them, but they're super on the East Coast. It's probably different now, but back when I lived there, I, I always see them in them hospitals. Them. For some reason, I when I go to hospitals, I know <laughs> there's going to be Andy Cap hot fries in the vending machines, and I always buy them. Vending machine, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I can eat a whole bag of those like it's nothing. And facts. Yeah. Oh, I felt super relatable to that. I like these questions, man. <laughs> I, I shit, shit that I love to think about. What That's what we do, man? What is the hardest note in memory that maybe you were you were tracking in the studio and it just this note was just really really hard to nail in a particular song? Yeah. Does, does one come to memory? Um. I. <laughs> yeah, I did a. Uh, a cover of this band called Picturesque. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they yeah. Had, yeah, they have a song called Speak Softly. And I remember just, I wanted to do this cover to prove to myself that I could do it. And it has this stupidly, like, high note at the end. I want to say it's like an A5. And I probably did, like, 20 takes. <laughs> it was a strain. Like, I could not do that shit live, for sure. That guy has an unbelievably high range. I think it's called like a Legario tenor. Very rare. Um, True. Have you heard yeah, him live? Anyway. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We toured with him. It was He's crazy live, which blows my yeah. mind. I don't expect him to sound yeah. that clean. He's awesome. Yeah, Kyle's great. Um, I think him and I sort of exchanged vocal tips a bit on that tour, which was nice. I, I got to pick his brain a little bit. I got burnt out of picturesque because when I worked at Journeys, they were just starting to blow up, and their music video played on that daily reel that we, the CD that we had to put in, and it oh, Journeys, really. So oh. like after like an hour, it starts playing the same song. So I had to listen to uh, yeah. one, I forgot the song, but every day for like multiple yeah, times a no day. No so more, sucks, man. <laughs> yeah, sadly, I mean, you get too much of anything, and you'll get sick of it. True. That's why when I start to like feel slightly burnt out on an album, I'll stop listening to it before I you know feel that way and then maybe i'll revisit it in like six months or something if money wasn't an option what kind of car would you buy um i don't know man uh i would okay listen i'm not much of a car guy but if money wasn't an option i would want a fully functioning DeLorean replica from Back to the Future. Hell yeah. And good call. And that's what I would yeah, that's what I would want. What's and your favorite Rick and Morty episode? And everything. Uh my favorite Rick and Morty. Uh, the Inception one's pretty funny. Uh Morty's Mind Blowers. I like that one a lot. You well, know the one where like voice is too loud. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Um the, the one where uh <laughs> like Rick, he fucked a planet, and, and like <laughs> the kids were his, but then they turn out to be God's kids. Uh, yeah. 
Just explaining the episodes is sometimes funny within <laughs> itself. The, it's a good show. I I love that show. When you when you the bin- bad of acid. Oh, sure. Oh, when you when you binge game. watch something on on Netflix, like what's your what are you most addicted to, like on any streaming service? Uh, I watch a lot of Hulu um, because it just has all the shows that I used to watch, um, and I can just repeat it. Like I I'll just straight up watch Arrested Development or Futurama or like Archer or Always Sunny over and over again on Hulu because. They're all just on there. Netflix is tight, but too many originals. Some of those I just don't fuck with. Who's got all the shows? Letter Kenny, Rick and Morty. Like that's all I need. Letter Kenny, Rick and Morty. Yeah, fucking um, Yu Yu Hakusho, which is my favorite anime. Watch Ooh, that good one all call. the time. Yeah. Uh, I just finished the new Dexter the other day, and it's it's superb. I don't know if you've ever. Oh yeah, how is that? I I've been meaning to check that out. It's is, it's amazing. Is, is it good? Yeah, it's amazing, it's amazing, and it's so good that I hope that there is a season two. But I can't really talk about it for spoiler I'm sure reasons. If, I mean, the ratings, if they were good and the viewership was good, I'm sure they will. Uh, I enjoyed that show a lot in college back in the day when I was a lot younger. I never finished it, though, because people told me the ending sucked. I did. So I just I didn't do it because I was like, I don't want to sour my experience. Um, Nobody likes when something ends. Nobody knows how to end things. Do I need to right? watch the rest of it? In order to know what's happening, with it would help nah, a nah, it, bit, but no, it recaps it right away. Yeah, like you would know more okay. background, but you don't need to finish. Yeah, it, re- it recaps it really all in the first it. in the first episode. Good. All right, well, I'll check it out. Good recommendation. Hell yeah! Where where uh is your your favorite tour stop ever from any project? Um, I mean. The obvious one was India because I've never played in such a uh, crazy setting. Uh, we played in Mumbai to like, it was a huge festival, like 2,500 people in this giant. To me, that's that's like unfathomable in this big ass venue with awesome sound and lights. And um, I'll never forget that. That's but. That's not much of a tour stop, you know what I mean? I can't. I don't know when I'll ever be back there. So, um, I guess a close second is London. It has this place called the uh, O2 Academy, I think it is. Um, and I played some cool shows there. Hell yeah, very cool. I think we got time for a little bit more. Um, are you down yeah. to review an artist or two with us? By the way, is this a, is this a new piece on your hand? It looks slightly fresh. Yeah, yeah, it's new. Um, this It's still actually healing a little bit. This part I got done about a month ago, and then the rest a uh, couple weeks ago. So it's still it's still a little bit crusty. Cool. All right, let's check out yeah. some let's check out some artists that you guys have told us that we need to listen to. Let's... Dreams and uh, I appreciate you guys for having me, and thanks to your awesome audience uh, for hanging out as well. Ladies and gentlemen, sweetheart, dude, you're super cool. Thank you. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, you take care. Uh, have a great rest of your stream, rest of the night, and uh, be easy. Be good. Cheers. Andy Sizzik, everybody. Right. Hell yeah. Thank you, dude. Three.